Hi guys, this week we're going to be talking to you about some of the amazing things happening in Bristol, the city we call home outside of ski season. We love our international campaigns here, yeah. um, free Edward Snowden, free Julian Assange, free uh, Nelson Mandela. Exactly. But we also wanted to take a bit of time to focus on local politics, because that's where it all starts. Yeah. That's the grassroots of it all. Charity starts at home. To the Saxons it was Brickstone. Yeah. But to people like you and me, we know it as Bristol. Bristol is an incredible city full of really inspiring people doing amazing countercultural things. It's not for nothing that people call it the Leningrad of the Southwest. Yeah. Anarchist bookshops, mm. uh, pop up restaurants, yeah. uh, clafuti kitchens for the homeless, mm. right? But Bristol has its fair share of social problems as well. One of the biggest problems that we're faced with here, not literally us, but that Bristol has got. Mm is homelessness. Now when I first heard about homelessness, I yeah. thought, that is awful. Imagine not having a second home. Exactly. Imagine how upset I was hearing that being homeless is actually not having a first home. Yeah. Not even a flat. Okay. It took me a good six months to get my head yeah. around that concept. Well, it's a big concept. If you're watching in Bristol and you see a homeless man or woman, let's be uh, yeah. politically correct about this, PC. for the love of God, point them in the direction of the nearest middle because you can eat very, very cheaply there. It's fantastic, really. And in terms of, uh, you know, a place to stay, uh, you know, Groupon. Uh, hit up Groupon because they've got yeah. some really good deals on hotels. Yeah, and massages. Stop! Right? Time for a truth bomb. I want to tell you a little story that you're probably not going to know about. Why is that, I hear you say? Well, I'll tell you for why. It's because the metropolitan media elite bubble conspiracy mm. doesn't tell you about it. There was a fire at Cabot Circus car park. What's that? I never heard of it. Well, of course you didn't, but it was very much a real thing and real people got, well, there weren't actually any, any casualties. No, it was predominantly property damage, yeah. but it had a real impact on real lives. We thought it was only right to honor the victim, well, to honor the damaged property yeah. uh, that was lost in the fire. So we decided that we would hold a candlelit vigil. Unfortunately, uh, we didn't have a lot of time to plan it, uh, mm. so there wasn't really a proper place to do the vigil, so we ended up holding it at a local petrol station. In hindsight, we should have used torches instead Probably, of candles. Yeah. Anyway, long story short, we had to hold a second vigil yeah. for the victims of the fire in the first vigil. But that's direct action for you. Yeah. Sometimes it goes wrong. Yeah. You can't plan a revolution. No. Not the way ours is going. No. Um, okay. Although Siri is a big help. One of Bristol's biggest problems at the moment is gentrification. Yeah. Now, if you guys don't know what that is, gentrification is when corporations come in to community areas and they turn everything into flats for profit. They come into a multicultural area and they don't see any of the beauty that yeah. we see. They don't get this. You know, they look at bicycle cooperatives and they think flats. Yeah. Vegan cafes, they think. Flats. flats. Gluten-free orphanages. Flats. So we were thinking, what can we do to halt the march of gentrification in this yeah. city? And then it just hit us, right? Gentrification is about areas being desirable. So if there's yeah. an area that you love that is desirable, simply make it less desirable, and then the companies won't want to move in. So that's why we're launching our campaign, hashtag piss on the pavement. Yeah. If there's a street that you don't want to see touched by the gloomy mittens of capitalism, simply we in it. Doing so will lower its value on the property market and make it less attractive to corporations. If there's a veg stand that you don't want to see gentrified, piss on it. Piss in the veg. Yeah. I'm sorry Price Waterhouse Cooper, but Bristol ain't open to your gentrification. Yeah, GlaxoSmithKline. Yeah. We're not interested. BP, get out with your Coca -Cola, flats. Coca-Cola, we don't want to know. We shall overcome. Our boycott this week is the number one symbol of gentrification in this country. Two words, charity shops. They come onto our high streets when other shops have closed down. Did you know they don't even pay their staff? It's unbelievable. Disgusting. You know, sure, your money's going to a good cause, but at the end of the day, what does the community need more of? Charity shops or the kind of organic bakeries that make our communities thrive? Yeah. For the sake of all of our colons, boycott the charity shop. Did Hughes Wheat Free Bread Emporium fail because it was a fundamentally unstable business model? I think not. Or because of the slavish corporatists who run the British Heart Foundation? More likely. I mean, you decide. Yeah, it was definitely It there. was then, though. Yeah.